What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another uh, episode of the Premier Space Museum Talk. I'm Dan Rivera. Just wanted everybody to uh, say hello to everybody. After Tuesday, we had a big time uh, thing going on with uh, with Sophia. Um, as you know, we uh, captured Sophia on the live on Tuesday morning, uh, and it was wonderful. It was great. Enjoyed it. Uh, I, I had a blast. Um, I, 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 I'm just like so. I was so excited. Uh, it was great. Um, we put a, I we put up two new videos. Uh, one yesterday of the actual landing, and one uh, this morning at, came out at nine o'clock this morning. Uh, a, a close-up shot of her on the tarmac at the end of Davis Mother's runway. So go check it out, guys. It's pretty pretty awesome. I was so surprised when I saw it, and I just, I was like, wow. Um, I plan on going back there maybe t t today or tomorrow, but uh, we'll see what the, what the weekend brings. Uh, I believe it's still there, and uh, more than likely it is, because they're trying to get it prepared to be towed over. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to this new, this live. As you can see, the topic is the B-36 Peacemaker. I canceled the live for the b36 prior because the so because sophia was coming in it was definite and i was getting trying to handle like three two different things at the same time uh and it just didn't work out that uh i brought this episode to you then so now i'm bringing it to you um so of course everybody knows the b36 as uh six turning and four burning great great analogy for this aircraft it's a huge bomber it's a huge bomber guys i'm telling you i am surprised that the thing even got off the ground just like the c5 I'm i can't see how these big jets get off the off the ground with the power that they have so uh have gotten a new camera a new 1080p camera um i wanted i wanted to see if everybody could comment on, on the comments i know there's nobody in the live right now but i would love to I would love to see everybody's feedback on how the new camera looks. Uh, looks a lot sharper. I can actually hold my hands up and, and not my have really my hands go anywhere. Um, I'm using a filter from Snapchat, Snap Camera, not Snapchat, Snap Camera. Uh, Snap Camera is pretty good for for this type of uh, thing. Uh, I'm going to start using lo uh, um, Zoom a little bit more uh, in the next couple of couple of lives. I want to try to get you guys involved. If you guys have Zoom, uh, please, I will post it. Um, I will post it on Twitter, uh, YouTube, and our Facebook group. So that way you can see it. Uh, everyone can participate. We had a lot of people in our live on Tuesday, guys. We had about um, we had about 37 or 38 people on the live just watching. We even had people from New Zealand. I want to give a shout out to those folks that were watching in Christchurch, New Zealand. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. Um, I know you're going to miss Sophia, uh, but Sophia is going to be here to, for other people to enjoy. Um, I'm going to be getting more information on what they're going to do with, with Sophia. So never fear, guys. I'll find out exactly what goes on with her. Uh, I'll make sure I know when the... I have an idea of when it's going to be pulled over to the museum, so we'll keep that um, we'll keep that uh, prospect open at this point. Um, I'll be talking to a few uh, few people I know, and we'll get the information. So uh, when I have the information, I'll be posting it to you guys. You guys will be able to see it, and I'm going to be live. I'm going to be live just like I was over at the land of uh, the final landing of Sophia. Um, there we go. All right, guys. At this point in time, please subscribe, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so you can get the notifications. And if you feel like you want to go ahead and make a donation, there's a donation link on the bottom of our website, pmarinspacefans.com. We also have uh, our link to our Patreon page. If you want to become a patron to help support the channel. Um, I will let you guys know I did get a new camera because of you guys so I could take better video This is all to you guys out there that are my subscribers are our subscribers 
I keep saying mine, but you know, I'm actually doing the lives, but I want you guys to know it's all because of you and of you guys. And I appreciate that. Um, everybody appreciates that at the fans of the Team Air Space Museum group page. Just uh, keep it to where, you know, I'm not asking for much. And, you know, all I want to do is preserve aviation history. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And we're going to be getting in more with uh, bigger groups. Um, I'm going to be doing more with the Arizona, Southern Arizona Spotters Group. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more with uh, hopefully Boneyard Safari if they, they help us out. Um, I, as I said in the last live on last Saturday, um, we are going to be putting together our own team in, uh, within Arizona. If you guys are interested in becoming a part of this team, this spotter team, um, please do. I uh, private message me. We'll be able to see what goes on, and that way we can um, get everything happening uh, for everything. So um, that's what we want to do at this point. I appreciate everything that get you guys do here. Um, Sorry, my background keeps going out, um, unfortunately. I have to keep changing it. Door keeps opening up, I suppose. But, you know, it's going to be an interesting thing here. We're going to be getting into the B-36 Peacemaker here in a minute. Um, I'm just trying to correct some uh, technical difficulties here. Unfortunately, it's not happening. I have to change a filter here. Hopefully, this filter will work. There we go. Much better. Much better. Let's see if I can get rid of that shadow in the back here. I'm going to move the camera over just a little bit. That ought to work. There we go. Much better. So, I still got the dang shadow. What's going on? Well, apparently, apparently it's not liking my, my setup as I have it here, so I apologize. We'll just keep it, keep it to where it is. I don't know why it's flipping the, the image. I don't like that. Let's see if I change filters. It'll actually work. Let's try this green screen here. Let's see if this works. <coughs> there we go. Well, you can't have it all. Flipping it. Tell you what, here's what we'll do. I like this. Uh, I'm gonna try to. There we go. B36. There we go. That, that's a better little background right there. The B36 behind me. So, yeah. In any case, uh, um, we're going to be talking about the B-36 uh, Peacemaker. Uh, B-36, as you know, is one of the largest bombers out there and the last piston engine-powered engine um, uh, bomber produced by the United States. They wanted something to actually pr um, replace the B-29 Super Fortress. Uh, B-29 Super Fortress, as you know, is the one that dropped the first atomic bomb. They wanted a nuclear bomber, um, and it was first designed to meet a World War II requirement for uh, basically hitting targets from the United States and Germany. Okay, and uh, basically, when they developed the atomic bomb, um, basically they they still needed a very long-range bomber, um, basically needing to deliver. Uh, the bombs over like um, worldwide ranges. Um, basically, the production of the 36 was uh, continued despite the end of the war a year earlier. 
A total of uh, 383 peacemakers were built between 1947 and 1954. Basically, uh, piston engine powered bombers was coming to a quick end with the introduction of the jet. Of course, the B-52 and the B-47. Now, I'm, as I'm, I'm looking at this information on FEMA's website, so if you want to look at it, you can. Um, basically, the B-36 was a symbol of American air power in the first years of the Cold War. But in addition to the four engines, hence the name six turning and four burning, uh, it basically could not bring it up to power and speed on uh, the performance standards that new aircraft and all the 36s out of service, and basically all, th all the BB-36s were out of service by the first months of 1959. A lot of you have seen the movie Strategic Air Command with Jimmy Stewart. Um, I decided not to use the intro to uh, Strategic Air Command because of constraints. I could get a copyright strike, so I said, look, you know, I'm going to go ahead and use this and see what happens at this point in time. Um, so I used basically footage, 8 millimeter footage that was put out by uh, Av History Buff. I want to give them a shout out for, for, and thank you very much for, you know, for the courtesy of using their video uh, of the B-36 taking off and doing, um, as you saw in the video, it was scraping houses. And they were getting, um, I was reading some of the captions, and they said that they were getting so low that they were taken off of, uh, people's TV antennas. Amazing. How amazing is that? It's crazy. It's crazy. So, by the way, the picture behind me is Mr. Is from Mr. Richard, Richard Takanaga. Uh, I want to thank him very much for the permission to use his, his, his uh, pictures. Those of you that help me on the channel are going to get major recognition. And I want you guys to understand that, um, you guys benefit also because I'm going to make sure that you guys benefit from this. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm attempting to, um, what I'm attempting to do at this point is to uh, go in and I've got a goal set for a donation to the museum. Um, and I want people to understand that I am doing this because I want to be able to donate to the museum. I want to do one big lump sum of donation from the fans of the Pima Air and Space Museum and Pima Air and Space fans. Basically, we're all the same entity. People love what we do. Uh, I've gotten private comments and things like that about it. And I, I want to preserve aircraft like the B-36 because um, right now I, I was out there on the weekend, last weekend, and I was looking at the B-36 and I was looking how much of a condition she's in. I mean, it's because of the weather. The weather, the weather does beat down on these aircraft out there, and I tell you, it's something. It's something that really, really gets to me. You know, I, you can't have all the everybody, all the planes in at the same time getting restored. No, it's, got, it's a due diligence process these guys go through, and you know, I, I applaud each and every one of them, volunteers and people that actually work at the museum. Every one of you guys are top-notch. Even management's top-notch. Even um, the executive director, director is top-notch. Um, the staff over there is top-notch. The uh, foundation members are top-notch because they know what needs to be done in the museum. And they, need, they, need, they know exactly what's happening. Now, the B-36 itself is an iconic airplane. It actually goes in and it will, um, you, you, you recognize it, um, you recognize it, it's very recognizable, okay, the, there's, there was an X, I believe an XC-97 or something like that, no, not, that's a, no, no, that's the wrong designation, but there is a transport version of this aircraft that was built as a prototype, and it is now, their last last product or last aircraft is sitting at the boneyard in pieces and i'm hoping pima actually decides that they want to have interest in, in restoring this aircraft because this this plane is that's iconic too you know just like the b36 is in history and uh 
they honestly were going to use that as a passenger plane from my from what, uh, what I've read. Now, I can imagine if they use that as a passenger plane. Uh, it would be like a the precursor to the 747, okay, that you guys saw on, on uh, Tuesday. I honestly think that, you know, these aircraft need to be saved, all of them. B-36 is included. The one that we have at the museum is called the City of Fort Worth. Um, it is a B-36J, uh, serial number 52-287. It was one of the last ones that came off the line in, in uh, at Convair. And the markings are of the uh, 95th Bomb Wing and Biggs Air Force Base, El Paso, Texas. Quite interesting the way these are, these have been preserved. I mean, um, now I understand that a lot of you didn't get notification of the live stream because I I didn't uh, post it on Twitter. I didn't post it on, um, I did post it on you on kind of on YouTube, saying that this was going to be up on this weekend. But I, like I said, you know, I just kind of you know I got really busy with what I had to do, and you know, there's other things you know that that kind of kind of get in, in the way of, of everything else. So, you know, I apologize for that. So Now, I'm going to run a little test here on the, uh, the quality of the picture. As you can see in the background, the B-36 that we have is a really pretty plane. It's huge. The, wing, the wings are very, very long. The four turbojet engines are at the, um, the end of the, each wing. And the uh, six uh, piston engines are pushing to the rear. Um, they they had thought that uh, pusher engines um, would actually work and give more thrust. They did, but not enough. So, you know, fairly, the B-36 was underpowered, in a, in a sense. Um, had a huge tail, elongated body that could carry a lot of weaponry. Um, wow, I was I, I was amazed when I saw how big the bomb bay was. If you guys walk under this thing, if you go to the Air Museum, you'll see um, exactly how the B-36 is. Um, you can tell the bomb bay is, is very elongated. It's about the same length or more of the B-52, uh, B-52's bomb bay. Uh, the the aircraft is uh, also synonymous for taking technological strides. Um, <coughs> excuse me for um, for the way the bomb bay is placed and things like that. The B one bombers got the same configuration. Excuse me, get a little bit of a cough there. So, like I said, B, the B-36 was um, was a, a very, very, it was a go-to aircraft. Um, they retired those, um, as you saw in the Strategic Air Command, they retired those and started the jet bomber, the B-47. And, um, like I said, I, of course, it led into the B-52, uh, the B-58 Hustler. Um the B-1 bomber, all those subsequent bombers that you have on the aircraft carriers and things like that. So the, basically the Air Force really set the bar uh, for uh, bombing. Um, they've got the most experience at bombing, high altitude, low altitude, everything. Um, so now if I go here and I scroll down, I don't know if you guys can see it. I mean, scroll up, excuse me. Uh, the wingspan, 230 feet. Length, 162 feet, 1 inches. Uh, height, 46 feet. That's a pretty darn big tail. From um, ground to tail, it's about 46 feet, 9 inches. 40, 410,000 pounds loaded. That's amazing. Max speed is 435 miles per hour. Max altitude, 47,000, I'm sorry, 45,700 feet. A range about ten thousand miles. That's a that's a bomber. That's an actual bomber.
I mean, I, from my understanding, um, looking at the one at, I believe, Dayton, Ohio, or I think it's Castle Air Force Base Museum, they, one of those two um, museums have got a B-36 open you can actually go in and see. It's amazing. I've seen photos of the interior. Oh, my goodness. Very roomy inside. The, the, the actual um, cockpit kind of looks like a, a suite in a hotel almost. Uh, you've got uh, anywhere from four or five members of the crew in the uh, the cockpit area. Flight engineers, co-pilot, pilot, uh, navigator, all that stuff in the cockpit. And, of course, you've got uh, people in the rear, you know, looking around, things like that. So, But um, it's very, very interesting, you know, very interesting aircraft. Now, as far as um, as far as it goes, the um, we have a walk around video of the. I'm gonna try to find. I'm gonna find it here. It's on our YouTube channel. I I was the one that took the B-36 Peacemaker uh, walk around, and it's there if you guys want to check it out. Um, but I should have included that walk around uh, as one of the live uh, start videos. But, you know, like I said, it's going to be interesting here. Why are you not loading? There we go. In any case, B-36, we've got a video there on our YouTube channel for it. And we want to be able to check it out and things like that. And check it out, guys. It's cool. It's cool. Now, what I'm asking for right now, guys, is I'm asking for, um, like I said, we're going to be doing, there is a crash site out there that I'm going to see if I can go visit. I will be 36. Um, I've, I've got to find the actual uh, coordinates. I'm gonna uh, take my information, my my gear with me. I'm gonna try to document it, things like that. That's gonna be later down the road. I'm not gonna be doing it right away because I'm actually working on another project uh, about a B B47 that crashed near Silver Bell, Arizona, which is basically uh, near Marana. Um, a, a, a friend of mine has already been there, and he was telling me that there's the aircraft is pretty much almost intact over there. Well, not intact, but the the crash area is intact. Uh, there's there's uh, debris littered all over the place. So that's one pro one project I'm I'm, I'm actually I'm, we're going to be involved in here in a little bit. So as far as the B thirty six goes, you know, once I find that crash site where it's at, I'm going to go to see if I can locate it and, and check it out. We'll probably have a uh, a live video for that. It's going to be sad to see, guys. I'm telling you, any crashed aircraft is is very very sad to see. I used to do uh, aviation archaeology before um, actually doing this, and I've done it to where you know I I documented all the Titan silos here in Tucson, Arizona, and. I have documented uh, uh, some of the aircraft up there at the uh, Groom Lake area that have crashed um, with the guidance of several people up there. And um, I tell you one thing, looking at a crash site, um, it's amazing. It's amazing that people have survived and it's, it's sad that people died if they did, you know. And that's kind of kind of the way the B-36 is. Um, B-36 is the same way. I've been all over Arizona and I've seen a lot of cr uh, crashes, a lot of crash sites, uh, but never a B-36 crash site. And I intend on, on getting some uh, video footage, pictures, put a little bit of a memorial on our website for them and so on and so forth. But um, like I said, I can imagine there's there's a lot of people that know their bomber careers to this airplane, other than the B-17 and the B-29, because this aircraft was something. 
Uh, Jimmy Stewart was actually, I believe, a navigator, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I'm just pulling it out of my head. Uh, people out there can correct me if I'm wrong. But um, uh, Jimmy Stewart was in the Air Force. He was a B-24 navigator, I believe it was. Yeah, he was on a B-24. And he loved aviation just like you, all of us all of us did, all of us do. And um, he was a proponent of a lot of things happening. He actually uh, had part of his hand in the Dayton, Ohio Museum. So it's quite it's quite the uh, I'm going to bring up some other stuff on the B B36 here. So uh, bear with me, guys. We're just going to go to Google here, and we're going to check out the uh, B36 Peacemaker. Okay, so here we got the uh, National Museum of the United States Air Force. They've got one. It's inside. Let's see if it'll pop up here. See, so it has areas where you can do 360 radar, operator station, everything. Pilot aircraft, commander radar, navigator, navigator station. It's, it's something else. It's really cool. Uh, related fact sheets. The last major engine that came into it. And there, there, there it is. There's some of the photos of it. There's some of the interior photos. That Co that cockpit is huge. Those gauges are like wow, I'm amazing. I'm gonna go back. Look at those gauges, guys. Those gauges. Can you imagine managing all those gauges? Back then, they didn't have fly-by-wire or uh, um, liquid crystal displays. Man, they, they they had actual physical stuff over there. Just gonna scroll through the pictures so you guys can see them. There's your throttle quadrant for the uh, for the six uh, piston engines. Rudder trim. Can you imagine all managing all those gauges on something? There's a lot of gauges, a lot of pressure gauges you have to deal with. I mean, look look at how many how many gauges there are. There's so much. It's very easy to overlook something. Very easy to overlook something. Oh, so those push breakers and everything. I believe this is the flight engineer's panel that we're looking at. Yep, flight engineer. Bombay doors. There's your bombardier's position. Look, they even had a coffee maker. Look at that. Coffee maker. Anybody want coffee? Looks like a ra uh, radio operator position. Oxygen station. Tube, the the old tube, got a little railing system that you just go on your on your stomach.
Bet you the navigator got a real good seat in the house. Look at that. Wow. The lighting on this is very, uh, on the plane is so cool. There you go. The trim wheel. Look at the left side. Trim wheel. Look at that. Look at inside. That's what they should do to ours at the museum. Just to open up so people could see inside. Oh, look at that. Wouldn't y'all like to be at the controls? Man, what an amazing plane. Huh. Let's see what the uh So that's that's the uh that's the one from the uh uh, um, uh Air Force Museum. So let's look at another one, see if we have a um, another one here. Okay, there's a, a photo of her when she's being built. Wow, even had tracks for, for wheels. Look at that, guys. That's amazing. Look at that. Tracks on a B-36. That's something. Even even Lockheed Martin, who I believe absorbed Combair, That's something. You got all kinds of articles and and pictures and things like that on about the B fifty two or B thirty six. It's so it's it's, it's n not funny. Even even have an Amazon uh, portion of, of a site. Of the site that actually is dedicated to the uh, amazing flying fortress, dude. What's going on, man? It's about time you get here. About time you get here. You got all kinds of little stuff for the V thirty six. Look, look at that from on Amazon. Plane tags. He's got a plane new a uh, plane tag uh, for the V thirty six. I believe this one, this tag is at the Pima Air Museum, guys. I believe so. I think that is, I saw it last over there. I went over there on, uh, I think was it uh, last Tuesday? 
But look at all the stuff related to the Peacemaker. You even got uh, phone covers, um, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you check it out. Get back to Pima's about the B36 here. There it is. That's the B36, y'all. Flying Fortress, it's good to see you. How you been? Give you a shout out. You're the first person in here today, and it's already 41 minutes into the uh, into the live stream. What do you think about the uh, uh, the B thirty six there, uh, Flying Fortress? Nothing can beat a B seventeen. I know that. Nothing can beat a B seventeen. <laughs> what do you think? I guess Flying Fortress isn't paying attention. Gonna have to ding him. <laughs> so, yeah. The uh, Flying, Fort Flying Fortress is a big RC, RC guy, and I want to mention his, mention him here. He, he's come to every single live that we've had. Every single live, and I want to give him a shout out. Thank you, Flying Fortress, for coming to all of our lives. Appreciate you. Um... There's too many. We've, uh, like I said, last live we had about 37 people in the live. We uh, we had everybody. We had a lot of people from Christchurch, um, New Zealand, and that was amazing. Um, I'm trying to get these lives to go more and more. Oh really, Flying Fortress? I want to get this these lives a lot more in in uh, in tune. To what what we've got going on uh, at the museum, I'm trying to give you guys live updates on the restoration. I'm trying to give you guys live updates pretty much on every every aspect of the museum. Now, as soon as as uh, things come down, and uh, it looks to me like uh, there are more aircraft coming. Um, Sophia and the 117 was a nice Christmas present to to the museum and to all of us. Um, I was so happy and pleased to see it come in. I, I'll never forget that moment. Now, the pullover is going to be nice. I would love to have seen a B-36 being pulled over. That would have been fun. I admire the guys that actually engineered this uh, B-36 because they really put a lot of thought into how big this bomber should be as well as its capabilities. I mean, um, each... Each area you learn new things. Like um, I got to give props to the to the Armstrong Research Center. It's over at Edwards Air Force Base. Those guys, they come up with stuff, and you know it's like wow, I didn't see that before. Of course, with the new B twenty one Raider out there, um, it takes uh, bombers to a whole new level. Let's put it that way. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Can you imagine going from a B thirty six Peacemaker? All the way to a B-21 Raider. That's interesting. Imagine that. Imagine that. You know, I also want to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see something here. I'm going to go to our YouTube channel. I do want to mention our, our winner of the challenge coin. Um... Um, for our our celebration, I forgot to mention uh, the winner of it, of it. They will be receiving a challenge coin. Let me go to here. I got too many windows open. They did. Uh, they did build the 36 on, on site. It came on a trail on, a, on several trailers. 
All right, hang on a minute. I'm having some, some lag issues here. So I'm going to look at the comments here. Actually, it's coming up here, so I can actually mess with it. All right, so I can get better on it. I'll just do it on my phone here, so. Gonna go to my videos. All right. Let's see if I can't get to it. There, like I said, there is a new video out there. Let me see. Okay. That was awfully weird. <laughs> All right. I would like to congratulate Mr. Um, Flying Fortress RC. He's in the chat now. I want to give him a round of applause. Congratulations, uh, uh, Flying Fortress RC. Um, I just want to go ahead and say thank you for being part of this channel. And I want to be able to say, yay, good job, good job. When I hold, I want to let everybody know that I do hold um, giveaways. So Mr. Flying Fortress RC will be receiving a challenge coin from the P. Marin Space Museum. I'm also, I'm not, I'm not just going to be giving uh, challenge coins away. I'm going to be giving keychains away. Um, that's coming up. Uh, we've got the um, the one from Top Gun Maverick that uh, Maverick had on his keychain. Uh, they're in they're in stock now, and I'm going to be getting a, a bunch of them, so I can do giveaways for those, and I can giveaways for A10 keychains, uh, F18 keychains, uh, you name it. They they've got a, a few of them there, so uh, I'm going to buy a few of them, uh, a couple for myself and. I'm going to be giving the, the F-14 ones away, uh, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, we're going to be getting um, more challenge coins in. I will be um, giving more of the challenge coins away. You've got, you'll, some of you will have your choice of either a challenge coin or a, or a, 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 a F-14 keychain or whatever keychain you want. Um, I'll probably be listing those um, for that. Now, I wish they had a B-36 keychain. That would be a heck of a keychain. I really would. But we got to do what we can do. They do have Christmas ornaments over there. Uh, I did find out they've got Christmas ornaments. Uh, they've got SR-71 Christmas ornaments. Um, and you're able to hang them on your tree and so on. Uh, I just want to mention because we got 10 minutes left because the live will automatically uh, uh, end here. And I want to be able to say thank you to everybody here 
Uh, our giveaways are going to be in chat only. I need to stress that. They're going to be, if you come to the live and you come in and you participate, um, things like that, um, then you will receive a, you'll receive a, a, a gift or, you know, um, I'm actually thinking about making uh, flying forts. I'm actually thinking about making challenge coins for the group, uh, quite honestly. Um, by the way, uh, flying forts, how do you like the new uh, camera? I've got a 1080p camera. Now, I got rid of the 780p camera, and it's uh, hopefully it's working good. And if it's working good, I'd be glad. I'd be glad because, you know, the I can still I can do this without having, you know, if I if I go like this, my hands are going to go out. If I go like this, it's, they're going to stay in. You know, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I've got to get a green screen here for the back. I haven't got a green screen yet. So, but like I said, I want to see what everybody thinks about having the P Mayor and Space fans or fans of the P Mayor and Space Museum challenge points. There's gonna be two types, okay? There's gonna be two types. I'm gonna, I'm actually looking for it. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get one made for Arizona that has the Arizona flag, like the Pima and Space Museum does. And I'm also gonna do, um, I'm gonna do try, I'm gonna try to do ones with actual aircraft on them. Um, I'm gonna try to do a bunch of aircraft and see if I can get that going, but we'll see. Those are going to be expensive to get. I mean, I have to order them in bulk. And those will be those will be offered on the um, when I get the store back up and running. I'm switching. Uh, I'm switching partners right now for the store, so the store is not going to be really much active active anymore um, until I I switch everything over. But um, I'm going to be taking ideas for apparel. Uh, if you guys want to see something on there, if you want to see a B36 Peacemaker um, shirt or cup or mug or whatever, I mean, we could do that too. So it's going to be merch for to support the channel and to support Pima. Okay, I'm doing this not to get rich. I'm doing this to uh, go in and check it out. So at this point in time, guys, I want to let all of you know that things are in the works this next year. This next year is going to be big because nothing is going to stop us from having our our fun and preserve aviation history. Again, we're not going to be stopped. Uh, we have a way and a will to keep these aircraft in everybody's hearts and minds. And I like that. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you all have a good, good rest of your week. And I, I hope everyone enjoys it. Uh, Flying Fortress RC, I will, I will get with you to get your, uh, your challenge point out to you. Uh, and Damon Blair, if you guys, if you are still around, uh, Damon Blair, I also have yours as well. Okay, so. Thanks, guys, for joining us. So we've got about another five, and a half, five minutes and 20 seconds. And we were going to close out right now. And I hope you all have a good day, a good week. I want to wish everybody out there and your family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We're, we're probably going to still be doing lives. Uh Christmas, I'll probably, I might be doing a Friday Night Live on on uh, the weekend before Christmas, or the weekend of Christmas, excuse me. So if you are there, please join us. Um, I'm going to probably schedule it for Friday night. Uh, it's going to be one hour long. We're, we might go into an hour and a half long, uh, all the tens. So thanks very much, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you soon. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Make sure that you don't, if you see Santa Claus in, in the air, please refuel him. Refuel him in the air. Call on a Pegasus, call on an extender, call on a uh, Stratotanker, whatever. 
give them free gas so you can get to uh, all the little children, girls and boys, and those have been good for Christmas. We'll talk to you guys later. God bless you, and keep flying.